The part one video showed sample aids on screen features, so this part two shows some real sampling. And it's based on the practical examples in the document called Using Sample Aid with EMU Ultra Samplers. Now unfortunately these samplers cannot be fully automated, so button pushing is unavoidable. But at least Sample Aid reduces this to a simple repetitive set of actions and guarantees accurate samples without taxing the grey cells too much. Now the following assumes there's a MIDI connection to the sampler as well as the audio to be sampled. If you don't do this the samples won't be placed correctly. I've used the dedicated sampler output as shown in part one. And we'll start with the simplest example EX1 which is just sampling notes at a fixed velocity. And this means the repetitive action is just arm, place, arm, place until you're done. I've already set up sample aid with the pitch range I want. It goes from C1 to C6 in three semitone steps. There's a single step for the velocity, which is the maximum value of 127, and the note on time of one second gives me the sound I want to capture. Now the estimator section was a bit different to what we saw in part one, and there's also the addition of a note tail time and we'll see how to set that later. These first three parts are common to all the examples. Now the first thing to set are the recording levels and if we do sample manage new we can see the input VU meters. Now on sample aid we can use the note button to send a single note or if your sampler is on the other side of the room like mine you can automate it by setting the note delay to a short value and setting both hold options and then clicking play. Now it's best to check the levels at both the low and high pitches of the range and you can do this by just clicking the manual buttons. And once the levels are correct we can set the sample length which is this value here. Now what I do is to set it to a value much larger than the note on time so we'll set it to say three seconds and press arm. Again we need to check both extreme pitches so we'll click the first pitch and then click note to trigger it. Back on the emu the note has been captured and my preferences are to auto truncate both the start and end and to turn normalize and loop off. Now those choices are discussed further in the document. And while we're at it we can check that the orange note here has been set correctly. Uh, if not that means your MIDI link is not working. I press keep because it's only a test sample. And then repeat this for the other end of the pitch range. Now we can go to sample edit and look at those two samples and look at the actual time for the sample or the length of the sample, 2.2 and 2.1. Now if those values are very close to the sample length which we used here, if they were very close to three, then there's a chance that the length value is truncating the sample early, so you'd use a much bigger value. So at the moment they are well within that limit, so we can decrement the length to just above the longest value. So two is too short, 2.5 is just about right. That longest length can be used in the calculator. If we subtract the note on time from it, which is one second, we get 1.2, and that's the value to feed into the note tail time. So we also need to double check the other values, the sampling rate and bit rate, make sure they match the sampler, and we should get a much better estimate then of the total RAM required. And we can delete these two samples, we don't need them anymore. Let's go to manage, Utils, Erase. Now the third and final thing to set up is the note delay and this allows for the time it takes uh, you to press the place button, uh, emu to process and place the sample and for you to press the arm button again. So you may need to try a, a couple of dummy runs to find a suitable value. 
Now before we start, if you've already created or placed samples in a preset, then it's probably best to wipe the slate again. So we'll press Master, Bank, Erase. OK. Right, I'll just check the settings on Sample Aid before you start. Make sure the hold settings are unset and the delay times are set as required. Now because the sampler in my setup is a bit further away from the computer I need a start delay to give me time to get back to the sampler. OK, this is example one. We're going to create a new preset to hold all the samples. That's Preset Manage, New, Pick an Empty Preset, Press Sample Manage, New, now if you've already gone through the preliminaries, you've probably got all these values set correctly, but just before you start, you could double check by forcing a dummy sample. But this is the important one. That target should be the one we just created. So use the ink or deck buttons or the rotary wheel to select the preset you've just created. Emu will remember those settings for the rest of the session. So we can dispose that sample and we're ready to go. So press ARM, make sure the sequence on sample aid is set to the beginning by clicking the manual buttons, then click play one. And that's all we do, we just keep pressing place and ARM. There's no thought required, we just keep going until the sampling stops. If you've been watching the notes coming through, you can see when it stopped, but if not, you've probably armed it and there's no more notes, so just press stop which cancels it. You can look at sample edit, just check the samples, or preset edit, and see them in the multi-sample in voice one. And the important thing to check is the orange key agrees with the name in the sample. And if we scroll to the right with the page next button, we can see the notes mapped across the, the complete pitch range. <laughs> 